I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm at the Mesker Park Zoo with Katrina. Hello. Hello. What do you have here behind us? So today we're going to be talking about the Szechuan Takan. Um, they're native to China and we have two of them here. We have a female named Dawa. She's nine years old and we have a male named Tali. He's 11 years old. But how long do these animals live for? So they live to be about 18 years old in the wild and about 20 in captivity. So captivity means um, an exhibit like this where they don't have any predators coming after them and they get a good quality life where medications are involved when they're getting older and we're giving them the best care that they can get. So what do these Takans usually eat? So Takan usually will eat a lot of grassy vegetation. Um, in China, they um, go to different elevations in the wild. They'll go up to 14,000 feet up wow. in elevation. Um, they live on a lot of mountainous kind of environments. So they eat bamboo, they eat um, grass. Um, depending on what time of the season it is, they'll eat um, pine tree kind of stuff. Um, so dur during the summer, they live in larger groups. Um, they typically live up to 300 in their herd during the, the herd. summer. So they need to have more vegetation around them during the summer. During the winter, they go down to a lower elevation at about a thousand. And they live in smaller groups with like 10 to 30 individuals in that group because the vegetation around them is not quite as easy to find. And what do you feed them here? Um, so here we feed them alfalfa hay, um, timothy. We also feed them um, grain that is um, supplemented great for that in, for these individuals. Um, we also feed our female a uh, type of grain that helps her not get pregnant um, and we can take her off whenever we're ready for them to have another young one. And I see that they have a, quite a big enclosure in there. Like, why would a nice big enclosure be good for them? Um, so these animals, um, they have a very wide, uh, um, they're larger animals so they need an area that is larger for them. Um, they like to move around a lot. They also, in the wild, use very large home ranges that they are involved in. And if they're up at 14,000 feet, like, what kind of adaptations do they have to help them in the mountains and with the cold? So these guys are considered to be antelope goats, um, is kind of how people refer to them. They have um, hooves that are cloved almost, that they can go ahead and move up the mountainous kind of regions, which makes it easier for them to do that. Um, going back to what we were talking about for what they eat, something kind of fun about them is they are ruminants, um, which means that they have four stomachs. Your giraffes, your um, goats, um, sheep, also cows, they have four stomachs, so they'll they'll eat what they're going to and then they swallow and it goes through the two stomachs to start out and then the larger vegetation that they weren't able to digest the first time they'll regurgitate it and then they'll start chewing on it again and then swallow to finish the breakdown of the food. It's quite interesting. I <laughs> never knew the whole word for it. <laughs> So you and I were just talking about this, but what is the really cool winter adaptation that these Takans have? So these guys, um, during the winter, they'll go ahead and they'll gain another coat underneath the actual coat that they have. So they have two different coat or two different layers of coats. And then they also go ahead and when they suck in cold air, they have a large sinus cavity and that allows them to warm up the air before it gets to the lungs. Um, during the summer, um, their coat is very oily, 
and that acts as a raincoat for them. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Very helpful for them. So are these Takans endangered? Um, so these guys fall into the category of vulnerable. Um, so right now there's not a lot being done for them um, in terms of protection purposes. And I've read on like all my mouse in my research before I came here, but they have a very unique way of handling predators. Do you mind telling me that? Yes, yeah, so they, um, when they are feeling threatened or that something is coming into their territory, one of them will let out a really loud cough noise and that alerts everybody that a predator is around and everybody runs to um, a really dense thicket where they can hide in that vegetation and everybody lays down and that's their form of um, camouflaging themselves into the environment. And thank you so much for telling me about these talkings. Yeah, it's been great having you here today. Thank you. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirt. As always, I'll see you next week.